Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here, coming at you with a follow-up video to our uh, best way to start an account for new players. I got Rai with me. How you doing? Hello, YouTube. I'm good. How are you, Circus? Good. I wanted to do this video because our first one was so successful. We've had a lot yeah. of people comment on it. Uh, they've been in our Discord talking to us about it. A lot of people mm -hmm. have been doing, I guess, the program we set forth in the first video and uh, have graduated from, from the first step and wondering, what do we do next? What do we do next? So <laughs> What's the next step? Right, yeah, so I thought we'd do this video. Uh, I'll kind of show you where I'm at. Uh, you guys are way better at this than I am. You guys have been grinding a lot more than I have, but um, I did get my third Canadian, so we talked about that in the first video, right? We're going to go after uh, our staples first, so we used our UR Dream tickets. We got two Floodgates, and then we went in and got two Hero Structure decks, and we used those to start farming because with the hero decks, uh, we're gonna get gems and then we're gonna go buy Canadias. And when we get Canadias, we're getting Ankies, we're getting mass changes, we're getting all kinds Ooh. of stuff. And then you can get your uh, your Canadias and upgrade your hero deck at the same time, it's great. Once you get your three Canadias, people are like, what do we do next? And the suggestion was uh, Cosmic Cyclone. Start going after Cosmic Cyclone. And in the original video, we had said, why don't you, uh, if you want, you could go get the Glad Beast Structure deck and, but now that I've been grinding this account for a little while, I would not recommend that because that's a thousand gems you can put towards Cosmic Cyclone. Yeah, at that point, yeah. yeah it's, just, it's, just keep going, not, just keep going. I would not reinvest. I would only pick one or the other. I wouldn't pick both structure decks whatsoever. Right. Unless you really want to play Gladiator Beast, which I do not recommend doing. <laughs> right, so go for your Cosmic Cyclone. You get three of those, and then people are saying, what do we do then? Well, I wanted to show you where I'm at right now. Uh, if you have been watching on Saturday nights, we do uh, Hanging with DLE, and I've been streaming this account. And uh, through gold, I played the Hero Jack. And then once we got to gold, people started requesting that I play Amazons. So I wanted to show you guys. This is another option. If you have your tickets laying around, this is all, all these monsters are tickets. So you can build this deck. Um, and then you see there's the Canadias, the Floodgates, the Wall of D, uh, the, the Willpower, and the Onslaught. Uh, the willpowers tickets and the onslaught you get from the anki box so it, it all works out great uh so i i played this to legend i got to legend with this and i know how uh on reddit reddit loves proof of rank so i'm gonna do this before since the box is not or the i'm sorry the ladder has not reset yet there it is right there one season i got the legend legend two or legend one i'm sorry um i'll show you the pvp just just to prove it some more, Rai. There we go. Legend 1, completely free to play using the hero deck, and then I switched over to Amazon. So if you have any questions there about that, go. put it in the comments below, and we'll hit you up with that. So people are asking, what do we do now, Rai? We got our staples. You know, um, I got my Canadias. I got my Floodgates. I was able to get my Cosmic Cyclones. Um, should I go after Sphere Karibo? Uh, no, do not go after Sphere Karibo. Um, it is a fantastic card. Uh, one of which you can actually purchase. You can p purchase a copy for real money, but if you want to do this totally free to play, I would wait until the 50% uh, percent off on gym sale to get Sphere Karibo. Because the problem with Sphere Karibo is while it's an amazing card, um, you know, it, it is one of those cards that drops in and out of the meta, just like Floodgate and Kanadi and all those as well. Um, but it's in a way worse box. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> you just it's... you you like you get nothing good out of there unless you want like a blue eyes ultimate dragon or something. You're right. just not gonna get any good cards. It's terrible. Um, so with how bad that box is, I I can't in good faith tell anyone go and get it because it's also a main box. So it's just it's just the worst. Um, so with the gym sale, you're able to go get those cards uh, at a way less price, either gym sale or the reopen sale. I would say one of those two, uh, would be the best ones. Obviously the reopen sales, you're essentially doubling your chances every pull. Um, and the, um, the gym sale, you just, you're spending less to get your sphere Karibos. Um, and if so you definitely would wait on that. And if you're wondering what could replace it, I'm pulling kite road up on the screen. This is a card trader card. Mm -hmm. It's, it doesn't do exactly the same thing, but it's very similar and it's free. Yeah. And you can okay. just do, or you can just do normal Karibos. I was or... going to pull that one up next. Yeah, that that's yeah, they're, also they're... Uh, uh, tickets. Yeah, Sphere Karibo is the best version of all those cards, but um, I would not break the bank just to go after it. It's not that good. Right. It's so... probably the worst of the staples to get right now. Uh, login bonus campaign reward. Okay. So there you there go. You go. Uh, yeah, you can use tickets, I believe, to get that. So, uh, yeah, th that, that will also... Take the place of oh, the Sphere of Karibo. Sphere of Karibo is the best, but 
poor man's versions will get you by. Um, it's not it's not a super hot hot card right now, but it, it is nice to have. Yeah, it it comes in and out of the meta. We actually weren't um, not even that long ago. We were in a meta where nobody played Sphere Kribo, so Cyber Dragon just was running rampant everywhere. <laughs> right. So something had to be done. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. So the question is: All right, we're done with that. We got our staples. What do we move on to? And we recommend moving on to deck engines. So, right, you mm -hmm. kind of want to explain what a deck engine is? Yeah, so engines are um, a, a core of cards that can be put and splash into other decks that are supposed to make those decks um, function better than if you did, like, a pure version of that deck. Um, so, for example, uh, Neos, the Neos engine, right, is the Neos fusion spell card, the Neos mo normal monster card, and then whatever material you're making Brave Neos uh, with. Um, and that can be splashed into multiple different decks. The objective being when you use your Neos Fusion, you're sending uh, a monster that helps your deck um, to the graveyard. So then the follow, you follow up, you have more options for the, for the follow up turn. All right. So here's the Neos Fusion uh, deck. And this is uh, where you're going to get the Neos engine. Basically, the engine is the, the spell card. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Neos himself. And, and then his, his conditions to summon him, essentially. That's the whole right. engine. Um, and then the cards that you put in it would be things that abuse uh, that engine to, to be better, essentially. Right. So I would not recommend going into this deck unless you're going to buy uh, at least two of them. Mm -hmm. um, but you, if you're going completely free to play, you're not going to be able to do that because you're going to be able to buy one with 1,000 gems, which to me... And that's it. <laughs> it's not enough. Woo! Yeah. 1,000 gems when you're grinding... I don't know. I don't know how you guys are. I, I'm not rich, but uh, this, if you were just to buy these outright, is like 20 bucks. I can make that at work, no problem, in a lot less time than it takes me to grind a thousand gems. So to me, right. just spending the 20 bucks is a time saver over grinding yeah, out a thousand gems. No, for sure. And yeah, structure decks have the advantage of when you use real money, they are super, super worth it. That's kind of the advantage of them being there. Right. Um, so, you know, that's definitely an option for you. But, you know, obviously we want to do more free to play. So this is probably not going to be the way that we're going to go. Right. We're not going to recommend this because you don't want to play this at one. You don't want to have one not Neos Fusion and you don't want to have one uh, Elemental Hero Brave Neos. Okay. You want to mm -hmm. have it at two, if, uh, if at all possible. So I would not recommend doing this. Um, now, another engine that's very, very popular is the Invoked Engine. Right. Why don't you tell them a little bit about that while I pull it up here? Yeah, so the Invoked Engine is literally two cards and a whole bunch of extra deck monsters. Um, and they can literally go into any deck as long as you don't really need your extra deck or uh, you don't use that many slots in your extra deck. Uh, essentially, the whole strategy revolves around summoning Alistair the Invoker, which lets you search the Invocation uh, spell card, which lets you fuse Alistair and then uh, a bunch of different elements to spring out a bunch of different mm -hmm. Invoked monsters. Um, the most popular being Purgatrio and Cassitis, um, but also Magellancia and Caliga are there as well. Um, all of those cards come in this box except for Purgatrio. So this would definitely be one of the more expensive engines to get into, but this is one of the best engines um, in Duel Links and that could probably stay for a very long time. Um, this is a deck that's hard to hit with the ban list because they're all URs. <laughs> so yep. chances are you're not going to get hit. Um, but it's so, six URs out of this box. And then, yeah. I mean, you got and the Cassidus. And two from the Purgatrio one. Right. Yeah. So the Cassidus right here is a rare. Uh, the Megalencia, you're not going to use a whole lot, but you can. You can. It's uh, super rare. And then the Caliga. Where is the Caliga? Caliga would be oh, right, next to, right next to the Cassidus. Oh, it's right next to it. I'm looking yeah. all over for it. <laughs> there you go. It's also a rare um, one. So. This is probably the best investment. However, uh, especially since right now Invoked isn't even the best deck like it used to be. Um, Element Sabers got nerfed very, very hard. So they have to kind of find either a new place or E-Sabers have to figure out a new way to play or whatever the case may be. Um, it's not necessary to go for this right away. But eventually, somewhere in your Duel Links career, you're going to get this engine because it's ridiculously good. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I, I did get it on my main account. I, I, I did this technique on my main account, and that's how I came up with the idea. And I had to grind out three Alistairs. Swear to God, I'm not even making this up. 
each one was in the last 10 packs of the box. And I had to mm-hmm. do that three times. So it's like 30,000 gems or something like that. It was ridiculous. It took me a long time to do. And it was very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> so I would, I would recommend, um, since we're doing free to play, I would yeah. recommend this only if you are continuing the investment process and you're not really planning on PVPing a lot. Because this box is actually amazing. Uh, you get Necro Valley, you get Alistair, you get the uh, entire E Saber, everything with E Sabers, you get that. Um, and the only downside is you will also have to go into another main box to get your Purgatrio because without Purgatrio, the power of Invoked isn't really quite there. It's still okay, uh, but most decks, what really makes the deck really good is Invoked Purgatrio. Um, and that is, of course, feature. another UR and another main box. So you're talking <laughs> at least at least eight URs. And then if you want to play Element Sabers, the yeah. Malay who's a, a UR... So now and you're talking then, uh, like 11 URs. That box isn't even that amazing unless you're going for Blackwing. You do get Bryo, which is cool. Um, yeah. But unless you want Blackwing specifically, that box. So that's the downside. That box is not amazing. The first box, though, that is amazing, amazing. Um, but unless you're going to only be summoning Cassitis, uh, you're not going to have much offensive power with, with Invoke in this situation. And there's a couple decks in here that are uh, still a little cheeky on the ladder. They're not great, but you can still play. And there's Magician Girls. And yeah. then there's uh, Gravekeepers. Again, neither are great, but you still see them, people playing them, you know. Yeah. And uh, they do well. They do well enough, I should say. And, and that's the- why I recommend this box over the other one we're going to talk about, if you're not going to do PvP, which you should. You should definitely try to hit COG, because that is free gems right there for you. Yeah. Um, but if you don't do that for whatever reason, you're just not a huge PvP fan, I would definitely say this one. It's more of investment and will give you more bang for your buck in the future instead of right now. Right. Okay, and then the one we did want to uh, recommend is. Did I get it right? I did. Whew. All right, is the Light Sworn Engine. Um, this one uh, is one of those ones that kind of comes and goes. It's it's in it's in fashion right now with Witchcrafters. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. got a lot smaller core. Okay, it's only a handful of cards. It's uh, the Charge of the Light Brigade. Uh, Lumina. And then Raiden right here. Sorry, Raiden. Right. So those are your main three cards. And then they do have a boss monster that's very easy to go into because of that. And that's Michael the Arch Light Sworn. Um, so there is one you are. If you don't get it, it's not such a big deal. But uh, you want to kind of explain how the, the engine works? Yeah. So the Light Sworn engine is super interesting. Um, it's, it's based on milling your deck. Milling being that you're um, sending cards from your deck to the graveyard. Um, the the base the the at its most basic you activate a charge light brigade you mill a bunch of cards and then you add a light sworn uh, the strategy behind this ver- this engine is you want a deck that does well when cards are sent to the graveyard either you're able to reuse your resources uh, or you're able to activate effects from the grave etc etc um, the way dual links um, is designed with skills like spell specialist and uh, show of nightmares skills that interact very well with milling your deck. Uh, there is probably always going to be a deck that it revolves around um, milling your deck to the graveyard. That's just how Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> works. Right. So that's why this engine is so powerful, especially people that don't um, that only play like TCG and don't really do Duel Links. That is probably why you're going to see this. There, there's there's ever since this has come out, there's always been a Light Sworn deck in the meta, um, mm-hmm. and unless they hit more of the core cards, like you can see Limit Three on the um, on the charge. Uh, that's probably the case that's going to be. Um, of course, the other one we talked about, there was a lot more, like literally Invocation and Alistair are both URs, so they will probably not see the ban list. Um, but right now, this would give you more immediate strength for PvP because you also are going to get Luna Lights, pretty much the full deck <laughs> from just this one. Um, and they're all SRs, you know, SR and below. Uh, so you will have a very powerful deck for climbing the Cog Ladder, essentially. Um, you should be able to hit Cog every single month with with this deck in, until you know the foreseeable future. Um, so that's why we recommended this one over all uh, the other ones. This is the best version of getting your engine plus getting that immediate power boost to really start winning games in PvP. Because you're gonna get two solid decks out of this. There is like a pure Light Sworn deck. It doesn't get played a lot, but you can easily Cog with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you just use all the Light Sworns that are in here, and then you got this uh, Judgment Dragon as your boss monster. He just comes and nukes the field, and then uh, you swing for game. 
Uh, so you can do that, or you can go into Michael. Uh, so that's, and these are gonna be easy to get because you're probably gonna go through the box twice, right? Because you're gonna want three of these. So you're gonna yeah. get two your first time around, and then you just need to get one more. First time around, you're gonna get a Judgment Dragon, you're gonna get a Michael, and then it's up to you. If you want one of each, one more, it's not that bad of an investment. Yeah. It really isn't. You get a uh, glow up bulb, which is an amazing card. Yeah. Um, still, even still being used in TCG, even to today uh, today's standard, it can be used in synchro decks. It can be used in XCs decks. It can be used just for tribute fodder. Um, amazing generic effect. I think it's literally once per duel. That's how good the, the effect is. Uh, so fantastic card you'll get in the future. Uh, you'll get core blue eyes cards. There's a blue eyes synchro in here. So if blue eyes continues getting support and it's good. Perfect. You get Maiden, which is another great card right now, kind of underused because it's not that great in the meta uh, with its effect, you know, being able to miss timing and stuff. Um, but maybe comes back in the future. Who knows? Um, and yeah, just just in general, oh, even the lights weren't in. Just, yeah, Sage, sage super yeah. important for blue eyes. Um, so this is, you know, it's definitely not a bad investment. Um, there will definitely be good cards. It's not as good as the invoked investment, especially no. with Necro Valley and stuff being in there, but it's a lot cheaper. You only have to go through it twice instead of three times, and yep. you don't have to go into another box to get a good PvP deck. So this will, because Heroes is good, and if you play, if you get lucky, you'll probably get Cog. Uh, but this will guarantee you getting Cog right. this, you every month, and that is 200 extra gems just for hitting Cog, not even counting the other ranks that you would hit, um, and the PvP rewards of of gems. So I don't know the exact amount of gems you get, but it's a good chunk of gems, and those gems can then go to getting invoked if you want to get invoked at that point. Right, because uh, maybe you get lucky and you go through one and a half times. Because remember, you only need uh, three of each card, so you mm -hmm. don't have to get four Martins, you know, this card here. Yes, you'll get two each time you go through the box, but you don't have to get all four. If you get if you get a third one, you're done. You yeah. Know? Right, if right. you get uh, three charges of Light Brigade, you're done, because by then you're going to have, uh, and then three Ridings, you're done. You know, you don't, you don't have to keep going. So hopefully it's one and a half times. Like where I said, you... Uh, it's a cheaper deck to get into, and then you start farming for your invoked, which uh, is a very good long-term investment. Yeah, so, if you want to get your invoked. I mean, at that point, I would actually probably argue go get your synchros, really good synchros. It, it depends. Right. It depends on how good XCs is, right? If XCs is garbage, yeah, go get your synchros. Um, if XCs is amazing, then you know that, that part would change uh, in the equation. But so, like I said, sometime in your career, you're going to be start farming for those, uh, in, those invoke cards. Um, you might even just be farming for Necro Valley. You know, if you're right. going into Black Wings or something, you need Necro Valley. Oh, hey, you've got Invoke now. <laughs> you know, so. And before you start there. doing synchros, give us a chance to come up with a good strategy because there's a lot of staple synchros that people will recommend to you that might not be, and we want to get the best farming strategy for them because there's there's some there was like it's a great card. But it's, it's in a, a terrible, terrible box, box. so yeah. we're going to try to prioritize which ones are the best, because some people might tell you to get Bryonic, and some people might tell you to get Coral Dragon. You know, yeah. so it's... I mean, if you, if you go Lightsworn, definitely you're going to want to uh, make sure to get seven star synchros first. Yep. Um, but we'll have to figure out which box is really the best one to go for. Right. You know, do you want to go for every? Do you want to go for Black Rose? Or you know, what's you go what's for the, the invoked one because it's got a Samurai Destroyer in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, just another reason that that box is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, and I did want to cover before we get out of here the the new player traps. We've been seeing people talk about them uh, in the video comments in our Discord, even on Reddit. I mean, we expect it on Reddit, but. People say, what should I do? We hear people saying, get a single copy of the Red Eyes Fusion deck. Mm -hmm. Do not do that. Yeah. that. That's just a waste of 500 gems. Yeah, I, I know there is like farming decks that utilize one Neos, one Red Eyes, one Keeper. Um, and while these decks, yes, they will successfully farm for you. They're very inconsistent because you only have one copy. Uh, terrible decision and even if you decide to go the keeper route to increase your consistency you are literally spending gems to make a deck to farm you gems so just right. cut out the middleman and get a deck that'll be able to farm you gems but will also allow you to be somewhat competitive on the ladder to get some mm -hmm. gems from there you want a deck that can play all aspects of the game farm all aspects of the game yeah um and the hero deck does that perfectly fine you don't need red eyes uh and will allow you to further um Every card you're farming at that point is something that you are putting towards your future inventory. Right. Um, like the Red Eye Slash around, deck, you're just throwing, that's just 500 gems thrown away. Yeah. Because around this time, this is when you pull up the power rankings 
and say, okay, what meta deck do I want to build? You know, what meta deck should I right. go for? Which meta deck is going to get hit? Which meta deck has the highest chance of, of you know, surviving a ban list? And this, at this point, you want to start going towards a certain deck. Of course, right now it's kind of hard because we're literally right before XCs. Um, but, you know, I think as soon as XCs drops, you should know what deck you're going for. Ignore the hype and go for something that's proven over and over and over and over. Yeah. For example, those people that uh, invested in Invoke when it first came out, <laughs> they're they're singing hallelujah you know they could literally just sit on that deck and just save their gems hit into the cap and then just buy whatever they want in the game right exactly uh the other trap i keep seeing and it just won't go away right it doesn't go away now, super you know. heavy samurai <laughs> oh man yeah super heavy samurai we talked about it a lot it's it's it doesn't teach you good Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, you're going to learn how to play just Super Heavy Samurai. And right now, especially with Witchcrafters being so prominent on the ladder and in competitive play, you literally can't even attack with your Super Heavies if they activate Veer Effect. Oh, they um, claim they have a Steel Swarm that can take care of all of that. <laughs> the problem in ladder play is you have to main deck that, and I don't think you want to be main decking something like that. Right. Um, you, know, you know, in competitive, it's fine. You can side deck it. Um, but yeah, unless you really like the archetype and you just love playing it because you want to be different or whatever the case may be, um, I heavily, heavily recommend that you do not go into Super Heavy Samurai. It will earn you quick, cheesy wins. It will get you um, King of Games. Uh, however, it does not teach you good Yu-Gi-Oh! So you'll be locked into certain decks. You'll get bored and you'll quit the game. Or it'll get you know, nerf because it's too cheesy or whatever. And now you're left with nothing because that there's nothing really. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. What do you, what do you have at the end of the day uh, after you're done with super heavy samurai, the stuff we're showing is actually, we're helping you get a variety of decks. Cause like uh, the, like uh, we showed you in the beginning of the video, you start with the hero deck, you play PVP, you get all these tickets. Then I bought the Amazon deck without uh, any gems whatsoever, all tickets. Yeah. You just and it. I'm going to say it. It's actually a, it's a better deck because it, it has special summoning. You know, it actually shuffles your deck. You can draw cards with it. It's actually a slightly better deck than the hero one, and you can get it all with tickets. Go. So, I mean, um, we're trying to get you some variety here, too, and uh, get into Luna Lights here. I think you're going to have mm -hmm. a lot of fun with the deck, and you'll learn a little bit more, like uh, I was saying, with uh, uh, learning more about the actual game rather than just Which how do is... I OTK. Right, which is a super important aspect. Uh, the more you learn about the game, the more decks you can play because you just have more knowledge. And the more successful the decks, the more fun you're going to have, the more likely you're going to continue playing this game instead of, I bought super heavies, they got nerfed, now, I, now life sucks and I quit the game or restart right. my account because everything's bad. And if you want a video on how to play Luna Lights, let us know. We'll be more than happy to uh, make that for you. Do not go out and watch the ones where they're using, what is it, uh... Attack five times and win. Oh, What's fatal it? five. <laughs> the fatal five. Yeah, there's a lot of cheesy uh, uh, Luna Light videos out there. So uh, we'd be happy to give you an instructional one if you need it. So let us know. There but I think that's pretty much everything we need to cover in this video. Like we said, uh, if you guys start getting to the point where it's like, I got Light Swarms, I got Luna Lights, I'm ready for uh, my Synchro Staples, let us know and we'll get a video out for that. All right. All right, I hope you guys liked it, and you know what's coming next. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. Get in the Discord, because then you can get in all of our tournaments. They're always free, and that's where we announce them. And check out Gamersubs. There's a link in the description below. Below, You'll get 10% off for that. And that's about it. So I'm Circus, and that's Rye. Bye, YouTube. We'll see you next time.